Hello, welcome to uh, part two of my portrait painting demo. Um, I started this piece yesterday, um, and yesterday I started from the very beginning. Uh, I just had my outlines on there yesterday because I wanted to show you um, how I create my underpainting and how I make some of the choices uh, that I make for my underpainting because um, I've had a lot of questions about that from many of you. So I thought it would be good yesterday to start my demo that way. Um, and now I'm going to continue working on this piece. So uh, I started placing some of the skin tones um, just at the end of the demo yesterday. Um, painting Little Miss Callie here. Um, and today I'm going to continue working on those skin tones and on the hair and I'm going to start bringing in some detail to the features. Uh, hi Letitia, thanks for joining me again. Um, and as you're coming in here everyone, um, I'd love for you to say hi and feel free to ask questions. Um, that's what the live demo is all about. You are the the lucky ones who are watching it live. So I'm here to answer your questions. Um, and we had a lot of people watching yesterday and that was really great. And um, my video got shared quite a bit and I'm just really um, grateful to everybody who, who shared my piece um, and who watched and asked questions. I think yesterday's video had like 3000 views. So it's pretty great. Um, lots of new people discovering my um, studio page and I just really appreciate that. So thank you everyone. Hi Bridget. Um, all right, so let's get started. So just kind of a quick recap if you missed yesterday's demo. Um, just gonna briefly talk about what I put on here. So I did my outlines and then I did some of the shading. I did it all in just a monotone um, brown shading and then I went in and did a wash of a complementary color underpainting um, throughout the panel. So complementary color would be opposite on the color wheel. Um, and I mentioned yesterday that I don't always go with the true opposite. I kind of take some liberties and I pick what I want to, uh, basically what I want to see um, for that underpainting. So um, I did that and now I'm just starting to bring in the skin tones. So I started with the darker layer and I make my skin tone using um, a four color mixture most of the time. I use white, burnt umber light, uh, pyrrole red light, and Hansa yellow opaque. So I put these darker tones down first and then I added more white to it and I started bringing in some of these lighter um, highlights. So that's where we were at yesterday. Um, and now my first uh, step that I'm going to do today is going to be another skin tone, but it's going to be slightly darker than this first layer that we put down. So I kind of start in the middle and work my way in both directions. Um, hi Stacy. Uh, hi Edgar. Thank you guys for watching. All right, so here's my new color um, and I've got just a little bit of glaze in there to thin it out. I'm using my number seven brush and I'm going to start looking for some of the darker areas. Um, and I'm thinking about kind of chipping away at any of these outlines that I might be seeing uh, because I really I don't want those to show up. Um, so I'm kind of going right over those. And this new slightly darker tone is also a little bit warmer. So I've got a little bit more of the pyrrole red in there. And I'm just kind of dropping this in over some of the areas where I already washed in my purple shadows a little bit darker. So that's part of the reason for the underpainting is it's, it's like my roadmap. It's showing me where to put some of these tones down um, as I build up the skin tone layers. Hi, Sherry. I'm glad you're watching. Um, this is my friend Sherry's daughter, Callie. So I'm glad that you get to watch this live. She said Callie was watching it yesterday too, which is sweet. I was thinking she probably was a little bit confused why her face was purple for a while, but uh, we're starting to make it look a little more natural now. Um, let's 
So I'm going to look for some of these darker, more red tones that are showing up in the ear. <laughs> it's all right, you're late. Sherry, you can always watch the beginning later, but we're just getting started. I mentioned yesterday I did a painting of Callie when she was just a little baby a couple years ago, and um, she didn't have any hair yet, so we actually just zoomed in right on her face so that it wouldn't be just this big bald head. Um, but now she's got these beautiful red curls, so we... We decided uh, a joint decision that I needed to do a new updated uh, picture of her because she's so cute. And luckily, Sherry had this beautiful photo already for me to work from. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit down here. Um, not seeing too much of this tone down below on the neck. Um, I think I'm going to move on. Oh, I'm going to put a little bit of it on the hands. I'm kind of also working on the hands as I'm working on the skin tones of the face. Um, and you'll notice that I'm not doing any blending. So I'm not blending this color into my previous colors whatsoever. I'm really just kind of creating a gradient and layering these tones down like steps. Um, and how, what happens is they, they'll kind of work together um, to, to create depth in the, the form because we've got shadows and highlights and they don't all have to be blend, blended together. Um, and in fact, what happens when you do try to blend them too much is sometimes you'll lose some of the tones. They'll kind of get buried in the process. Um, so sometimes that can have a negative effect because you're, you're losing some of your color when you're mushing them all together. So I really just like to drop the colors in and just let them be. I know that's a, a common struggle that a lot of my students in my live classes talk about that they try to over blend and then they end up losing these different tones because they all get kind of mushed together. Hi, Alice and Terry. Thank you all for watching my demo today. Um, okay, so with my skin tones, um, I'm actually just going to use a little bit of this color in the hair too, um, because I'm seeing little bits of it and I like to just kind of work my whole panel and um, drop the highlights in and the colors in as I see them. So. Very rarely do I fully paint in any one section of my painting. I usually just kind of bounce around. Um, and that's what works for me. I know other artists can work very differently, um, but I like to kind of use the colors all over the place and I think it ends up kind of tying the piece together. Um, it also helps me to paint pretty quickly because I'm getting a little bit of color everywhere rather than completely ignoring some areas. Um, and even if the color isn't maybe exactly the correct color, it's still, it's going to be the right tone as far as light and dark. All right. So let's see, we'll just put a few more little bits in the hair. Um, I do want to warm the hair up a little bit more, make it a little bit more red than what I've got here for the skin tone. But like I said, I just wanted to drop a little bit of color in there uh, just right off the bat to get it started. And when I'm painting hair, I never paint individual strands of hair. So you'll notice I'm kind of looking for big locks of hair. Um, because you just, when you look at a person, you don't see individual strands of their hair. Usually you just kind of see the larger forms. You rarely would zero in on just a strand of someone's hair as you look at them. So it's kind of the same thing with painting a portrait. Um, that you don't want to get hung up on those details. You want to look for the bigger picture. All right, and speaking of not getting hum, hung up on the details, I'm gonna, gonna take a break from those skin tones for right now. 
I say that and then I keep going a little bit more. <laughs> All right. We're going to move on. Okay, so now I want to get a little bit of color in the eyes because that's when the piece really starts to come alive when you get those eyes in. So I always like to do that towards the beginning. So I'm going to start with the whites of the eyes and I'm going to switch down to my little brush because I want to get this in very accurately. Um, and one thing I always stress about the whites of the eyes is that they are not white. Um, that's a, a really common mistake that we can make is making these whites of the eyes too bright can make the painting look like a cartoon character. So um, because they're in shadow by the lid, you always wanna err on the side of making them a little bit darker than what you think that they should be because you can always take little steps towards brightening them. So I'm going to make um, kind of a gray tone, a purplish gray tone using Payne's Gray and Alizarin Crimson and white. And I'm going to start with that. Um, and at first it might look really dark, but like I said, I'll gradually build it up a little bit and lighten it. And usually the tops of the whites of the eyes are a little bit darker than the bottoms because it's got the eyelid covering it, creating a shadow. Um, hi, Janet. All right, so I'm just gonna put a little bit in there and I'm leaving this purple underpainting I'm leaving bits of that showing because I think it's gonna look cool and that's part of the whole idea is to have those interesting tones popping through. Um, and once you bury those, if you cover up too much of it, uh, it's really hard to get that back. So I always err on the side of leaving a little bit more of my underpainting um, towards the beginning. I've got a little bit in there and now I'm going to go in and add more white to my mixture and look for the areas um, in the whites of the eyes that I notice are brighter. So I'm just going to drop more white in there. And that's part of the beauty of working with acrylics is you can just keep layering and the paint dries so quickly. Um, that this next layer will stand out even though I just put that first layer down. Now in this corner, the white of the eye is actually pretty dark. So I'm not even necessarily gonna lighten that up a whole lot more. This corner is a little bit brighter. And a lot of the time I'll put the whites of the eyes in and then I'll switch and I'll put the iris and the pupil in and then I'll kind of reevaluate if the whites of the eyes need to get a little bit brighter. Um, and one thing I should point out is the corner of the eye is always kind of red and skin toned right in this corner because the eyeball, the white of the eyeball is actually ending. And so then this is just like a little flap of skin here in the very corner. So I'm going to warm up my mixture. I'm actually just going to use alizarin crimson and white to make kind of a muted pink tone. Maybe I'll drop a little bit of that Payne's Gray in there, but I really want it to be pretty warm because this is going to be kind of a purple color that I'm just going to drop in this corner. And that's the skin. Actually, I'm going to need to warm that up even more, but I'm going to let that dry first. Um, Terry's asking if I would do a live demo just on the eyes. That's a great idea. Um, I should probably consider doing a really big portrait for something like that so that I could actually have you guys zoom in and just see the eyes specifically. I'm gonna have to consider doing some uh, more topic-based live demos where we really just jump in and do um, one feature. Nice, nice uh, idea, Terry. Okay. So got a little white in there. Now I'm gonna switch and put some of the color of her, the iris. So she has blue eyes. Um, so I'm gonna use Payne's Gray, which is really navy blue. Um, and I'm going to mix up a blue. I like Payne's Gray because 
It's not such an intense blue, so it makes a really nice grayed out blue, which is good for shadows. Um, and just to soften it a bit, I'm gonna put a tiny bit of yellow in there too, so it's, it's gonna green it up a little bit. Because even though this looks really mad, uh, muted on my palette, when I put it on here, it's gonna look really bright. Just one of those funny things that colors do. Um, hi, Kathy. Thank you. All right, so just gonna start putting a little bit of color in here. And I'm, I'm thinking about kind of the little fleck directions um, in the eye. So I'm kind of using my brush stroke in similar directions, still leaving lots of that purple showing up. And you know, eyes are reflective and kind of glassy. So you'll often have a lot of different colors going on in the eye. Um, but most of this iris color is gonna show up towards the bottom because up towards the top, like I mentioned, that's really in shadow. So I'm gonna go a little bit darker now, adding more Payne's Gray and a little bit more Alizarin Crimson to make it a little bit more purple. Um, Letitia's asking, did I say Alizarin Crimson and Payne's Gray and white for the corner of the eye? Yes, so if you're talking about this little corner where I said that that's actually skin, I did use the same three color recipe. I just used a little bit more of the alizarin crimson to warm that up a little bit. And I think I'm gonna go back and warm it up even further. Okay, so now I've got a little bit darker blue that I can use for some of the shadow. I added some more Payne's Gray and alizarin crimson to it. And I'm going to use that for the shadow over the iris. Same thing over here, and here the shadow is actually really dark, which I already washed in with my dark purple when I was doing my underpainting. I'm gonna put a little bit of this dark shadow around the edge of the iris, because it's always kind of darker at the edges. Okay, now I want straight black for the pupil, but black is not really black because I never use black paint. I always mix my blacks, um, and my most common recipe for black is actually just dark purple. It's um, straight alizarin crimson and Payne's gray. So it's really a purple, but when you um, use it completely straight without any white mixed in there, it will look black. Uh, but it'll look much more rich than if you were to buy a tube of black. You don't need to ever buy black. All right, so I'm just going to use this for that pupil, which we want really dark. Do that on both sides. And then I get to add that sparkle reflection um, on the eyes, which is going to make them come alive. So for my reflection, um, I don't want to just do straight white right away, um, and I like to have a little fun with it, so usually I will add a little bit of phthalo blue, which is a really aqua intense blue. So I'm going to add a little bit of that to some white to make this really intense blue blue, um, because this is going to just be fun to have this color reflecting in the eyes, especially with all of the red tones, like in her hair and stuff this aqua blue is really gonna jump out. So I'm going to put a little dab of that in on each eye. Oh, I have a little hair in my brush. Not the kind I'm using though. Probably one of my hairs. Um, put a little dab and your reflection shape is gonna be pretty close to the same on both eyes, and it'll usually overlap that pupil a little bit. You don't want your pupil to be a perfect round circle in the middle of the eye because it's going to look, again, kind of cartoon-like and weird. So if you've got your flash overlapping a little bit, which is what would naturally happen, um, it's just gonna look a little bit more natural. So now I've built that up with some of that bright blue, and now I'm going to add some more white to it and actually it's gonna be almost straight white, just tinted a little bit with blue. And I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit and make a brighter highlight. And that's really going to pop. 
So we'll just go right over that blue that I built up. I think I need more white. That phthalo blue is so strong. It's like if you even look at it, it changes the color of your paints. It's crazy. Um, I might need to let that dry even a little bit. Okay. There we go. We got a little sparkle in there now. She's starting to come alive. Um, Bridget is asking, is that better than dioxazine purple? Um, so I do buy the dioxazine purple and that's more of a bluer, um, uh, what's the word for it? It's like a Barney purple. It's like more of a deep blue purple. Um, I don't use it very often. I use the permanent dark violet most of the time, which is more of a pink purple. Uh, but what you can do if you don't want to buy both of them is you can add phthalo blue to the permanent dark violet and you will get more of that dioxazine purple. So you can actually create that color um, pretty easily. Um, thank you, Kathy. And yes, Miss Callie is a doll. Okay, so now that I put my sparkle on the eyes, now I can see that I do want to brighten up the whites of the eyes a little bit more. So I'm going to go back to my kind of muted gray color that I made for the whites of the eyes. I'm gonna add a little bit more white to it and brighten that up just a little bit further. All right. Because colors play off of each other so much that sometimes you don't know if your color is correct until you get some of the other colors in there as well. Um, and that is another reason why I like to kind of work my whole canvas rather than just staying in one area because it helps me to determine uh, what my color should be. So yeah, now we've got her eyes kind of coming out at us a little bit more. I think I wanna lighten the iris just a bit. So I'm gonna go back to that color that I was using for the iris, add a little bit more white, and I'm gonna add a little tiny speck of blue in there to make it a little bit more of a greenish blue. And these little bitty adjustments make a big difference. Um, so I'm just gonna put a few little dashes in there, which is going to show a little bit more texture in the iris um, and just kind of lighten it up a little bit. I have to kind of get away from it um, to see it a little bit better because when I'm so tight on it, it's harder for me to see. So I have to kind of pull myself away and evaluate it. Um, I always tell people get away from their painting a little bit so they can see it better because it's hard when you're on top of it to really get a feel for it. All right. Also, it's good to squint at your image if you're trying to get a better feel for it. Um, it just kind of simplifies the forms a little bit, helps you to not get hung up on the details of it and just evaluate more clearly if you're doing everything correctly. Um, all right. So I'm liking the color of the eyes, but I think what I need to do is put some eyelashes in and add these highlights on her eyelids because she's got some light highlights on the lids which I have not done yet. Um, so I'm going to start with the lashes and um, so we're going to go back to that four color recipe that I was using for the skin which was burnt umber, a little bit of pyrrole red, tiny bit of yellow and white um, and then I'm just gonna add more burnt umber to it to make it a little bit more brown, but I'm not making her lashes black. I'm really just making them kind of a dark brown tone. And I'm gonna just peek and see if this is working. Um, also, I'm not painting individual lashes. I think I talked about that yesterday, but I'm really just looking for the clumps of lashes. Same thing as with the hair. And I'm going to use the same kind of brownish red tone to put a little bit of shading um, around her eyelid. And I'll move over to this side 
and do the same thing. I'm going to, uh, yeah, just put a little bit in, never mind. Sometimes I'm thinking out loud and you guys are <laughs> getting to hear all of it. All right, so we got a little bit of shadow in there. While I have this dark reddish brown on my brush, I'm going to use this to put some shading under the nostrils because I'm seeing the same color down there. And we'll even put a little bit of the shading on the lips because I can see the same color showing up over there. And it just saves you time. If you've already got the color on your brush, you might as well just kind of peek around the whole piece and see where else you can apply the color. You're not wasting the color either. I need to get a little lighter under that nostril. All right. Maybe, since I still have some, I'm just gonna put it into some of these curls too, because that'll just help me to see where the hair is a little bit better. You see, I'm doing kind of just quick arch arching brush strokes. I'm not um, hesitating on them, which is going to make it look just more relaxed and natural than if I'm just kind of like slowly putting in the hair color. And I'm just gonna peek uh, and see what you guys have to say about it. Um, so Letitia is asking if she had dark lashes, what colors would I use? So if the lashes were darker, I would um, probably make a gray tone that I would use um, Payne's Gray, Alizarin Crimson, and White. So that's going to make kind of that muted purple, um, which you can decide how dark you want it to be. Uh, but that's what I would do if the lashes were more of like a black tone, um, but not completely black. Uh, Kathy's asking, can you rewatch it? Yes. So this will be posted on my page. Um, and if you haven't seen the video from yesterday, you can go back and watch that one too. Um, so yes, these will be available after the live stream. But I'm glad you joined me live because it's nice um, getting your questions as I go. So, all right. Back to Miss Callie. All right. Oh, that's what I was doing. I have all this like dark brown red on my brush, so I'm just putting some of this into her curls as we go along. And I kind of wish I had a bigger brush right now because this is my number one and I'd like to use a bigger one on the curls, but this is the brush that the paint is on, so I'm just gonna use this one for right now. Okay, I need to stop painting the hair because I told you I was gonna work on features today. So I mentioned before I need to put that highlight on the eyelids. So I'm going to make um, that highlight, still going back to my same four color recipe, um, which was burnt umber, white, Hansa yellow, and pyrrole red, but now it's gonna have more white. Um, very little of that burnt umber and just a speck of the yellow as well. Um, so Mimi is asking, can I repeat those please? Payne's gray, alizarin, crimson, and white. Thank you, Letitia, for answering that for her. Um, I love when you guys help each other out. Okay. So now I'm back to my lighter skin color and I'm just going to drop this color onto these eyelids. And this highlight is gonna get kind of broken up by some of the lashes that are overlapping it. So I'm just kind of dotting it in there, leaving some space where the, where the lashes are, are going over it. And we've got some of that highlight over here. I've got some highlights under the eyes too, giving a little bit more definition to the, the um, edge of the eyes. I kind of dropped that in loosely yesterday. I 
Actually, some of this color is showing up right here, too. We've got some of the forehead showing. I forgot to put that in when I was doing the skin. I was kind of thinking that was all hair, but there's actually forehead here, so I'm just going to throw that in. Um, okay, so that's making her eyes look a little bit more natural. Um, I'm going to use this to kind of shape up the nose a little bit, too, because I just really loosely dropped that in yesterday. Um, Kathy's saying, do I mix every color? Yeah, I pretty much do. Um, someone asked me that once before, if I ever just used a color right out of the bottle. And I, I don't think I ever have. Um, sometimes in an underpainting, if I'm doing a wash, like when I did the wash of the purple for the underpainting, that was just permanent dark violet watered down. I didn't mix that at all. But um, as far as when I'm actually painting in the portrait, yes, I'm, I'm basically mixing every color. Um, but I, I kind of continually go back to my same recipes. Um, so it's, I've done it so many times, it's like I just kind of know it like the back of my hand. Um, and that'll happen for you too, the more that you practice uh, working with acrylic paints. Um, hi, Sandra. <laughs> um, you can go back and watch the one from yesterday if you want to. Um, Kathy's saying, yeah, it'd be fun watching your daughter's portrait. I know, isn't that cool? Um, this is, I guess this is the first time I've done this with a commission piece where I've done the live stream um, as I create the commission, but I think that might be a, a regular thing for my portrait commissions because I can see where that would be really kind of a neat experience. All right, um, so we have a shadow under the nose that I haven't really attacked yet, um, and it's different colors. It's got some areas that are more red and some that are a little bit darker. I'm gonna start with the darker bit of the shadow. Um, so for my shadow, I'm going back to same four color recipe, but now I'm adding a little bit more burnt umber, um, which is going to be cooler and it's going to make it a little bit darker, and I'm going to use this to put that darker shadow in under the nose. Um, so it's darker over on this side, and I had indicated that with a line, which I'm covering up now because I don't want that line to show up. Um, and then we've also got this kind of cooler, darker shadow that's wrapping around the nostril on this side. So I'm going to be dropping that in too. But I'm careful that I'm not putting, covering up too much of my purple because I, you know, that purple is fun. We don't want to lose it. Okay, and now that I have this cool shadow on my brush, I'm going to look around and see where else I can put this cool shadow in. Um, and I'm seeing it on the side of the mouth here. And I'm seeing it under the lips. So you really want to be conscious of looking for warm and cool shadows because the same face is going to have both. It just all depends on how the light is hitting it. So if one side of the face, you know, has a cooler light coming on it and the other side's warmer, um, you wouldn't be using the same colors on both sides. Um, we've got a cool shadow on the side of the nose here. A little bit on the side of the eye there. And I'm also gonna use this to just start indicating the eyebrows. And with kids' eyebrows, you wanna be really careful not to overemphasize them. Kids' eyebrows are usually pretty soft, so you're not painting individual strands of hair. You're just kinda just doing a very subtle little um, indication of the, the eyebrows. This cool, color that I've got is also going to be my highlight on my lid here in the corner. All right, now she's got like little shadows under her eyes, which look almost as dark as the color I have, but I'm not gonna paint them in that dark because I'm going to make that edit to it um, where if I painted those just the tiniest bit too dark, it's gonna make her look 
like an old lady and we don't want that so most of the time I make these adjustments um, you know to like kind of exaggerate the beauty in somebody and not try um, you know not let it get pushed to a side where it's gonna make them look a little tired um, Letitia's asking, is it as dark under the nose or did you lighten it? So yeah, this is all the same color, but it probably looks like it's not because I've got some darker, other darker colors around it. That might be why. Um, not really sure. So still just dropping this cool area, this cool shadow in a few more places that I see it. Um, Okay, I think that's enough of that. Now, I talked about how there was this warmer, more pink tone on the underside of the nose here too. So I am actually gonna clean my brush because I don't want so much of that burnt umber on there now. And I'm going to mix up white, pyrrole red, and it's pyrrole red light that I'm using because pyrrole red is different. So pyrrole red light is more of an orangey, um, red, which is what I like for doing portraits. Um, okay, so I think I actually, I don't know if I'm gonna put any of the brown, I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of burnt umber in there. So it's mostly pyrrole red, light, the Hansa yellow and white, and I'm going to use this for a little warm shadow right there, which is looking pretty pink. Um, but I like putting these little rich pink tones in on skin. She's got some on her cheek too. Um, because it really just makes the skin tone come alive. And we always um, see more of this brighter pink on the ears. Ears always look more red. The skin on the ears looks more red than other places. Same thing with around the nose and just around the eyes. The skin's always a little bit more on the red side. So that's kind of a common consistent rule pretty much. Thank you for um, all your questions, everyone. I appreciate it, it gives me something to talk about. Um, and definitely anybody else, um, please ask whatever you're thinking because somebody else might be wondering the same thing and they might be afraid to ask. So you should just ask. I need to step back and reevaluate. Um, so there's a really red shadow under the nose that I haven't done yet. So I'm gonna go back and make a new skin tone, same four colors I keep talking about, but now it's going to have more of the pyrrole red in burnt umber. And I'm going to use that. Um, there's a shadow under the nostril so we see a tiny bit of the shadow inside the nostril but then there's also this shadow that's underneath it and I want to separate those two because otherwise the nostril itself will look too big and I'm not sure if you guys can actually see that color difference on camera you might not be able to but um I'm trying to hold my palette so you can see my color here I notice I can use the same color on the lips um, and the upper lip is always darker than the lower lip because the lower lip is a highlight and the upper lip is in shadow. So I've got the upper lip put in with some shadows and then just going to put a little bit. Now the lower lip is really pretty bright. Um, so I'm going to add quite a bit more white to this. And it's still that same four color recipe. So I, I really paint most of the hair, the lips, the skin, all with that same recipe. It's just different proportions, uh, make really different colors. Just looking at your questions here. Um, Mimi is saying, sorry, you missed the last color. White pyrrole red light, Hansa yellow opaque, and um, burnt umber light. That's my, that's my go-to recipe for skin. Just use it in different proportions. Um, I need to add a little bit more of that red, the 
pyro red because this her lip is looking a little too dull. I want to warm it up and make it a little bit more red. But I am careful not to put too much red in because that's also a common mistake, um, especially painting portraits of kids. You know, their, their lips are not going to be bright lipstick red um, unless they just ate a popsicle or something. <laughs> so be careful not to um, paint their lips too intense. Um, softer is better when it comes to that. Now there's a highlight right here that makes the lip almost, if I zoom in on the picture, the lip is almost the same color as the skin next to it. Can you see that? See, this is why I love painting from a tablet because you can zoom right in on the part that you're painting. Um, Amy's asking, how bad is it to use regular pie roll red? Um, so what I would do if all you have is regular pyrrole red is you might need to add just a drop of Hansa yellow to it to warm it up a pinch because straight pyrrole red is a little bit more of a fire truck red. It's less of that peachy warmer red. So that's how I would adjust it. Um, so now I'm going back to that area that I mentioned where the skin is almost the same color as the lip and I'm going to add more white to my little mixture here to really lighten it up. And a lot of the time, a little bit more red, a lot of the time you don't even see where the lips start, you know, the very edge of the lip where it starts and stops, especially on that highlight of the lower lip. Um, you know, unless the child is wearing lip liner, you really wouldn't notice that, uh, that color difference. So, and I'll probably go back and lighten um, and maybe make a few little bits of richer red here but we're just kind of building up the base um, and creating some of these tones. And while I have this color on my brush, I think I'm going to put a little bit of it on the nose, kind of soften that transition. Yeah, because I've got a little bit of a lighter area here on the nose that I want to lighten up Okay, and actually that same really light pink, I'm going to carve out this edge of the upper lip too. So I haven't really put anything there. That was still just the purple underpainting. Okay, I gotta step back and just kind of reevaluate. Starting to come together. I'm gonna zoom back out. Um, and you can see I actually left all this purple here on the shadow on the side of the nose. So I could try to mix up that flesh color and put that over it, but I actually really like that purple working as the shadow. So I'm not really going to do that right now. Um, all right, just looking at your comments here, okay. So I, I'm definitely not done with the face, but I'm starting to get to the point where, you know, she's starting to look like herself. Um, so before I get into too many details there, I like to put a little bit of color everywhere else. So I think um, I'm going to drop some of the color into her shirt. So I'm going to start with this really kind of mustard warm yellow. Um, and I'm gonna switch to a bigger brush because I, I'm going to be filling in some larger areas and I don't want to have my little tiny brush. Um, and I'm going to make that yellow tone using um, Hansa Yellow Opaque. A little bit of that pyrrole red light and some white. And you know what? I'm actually going to use some of the burnt umber too. So I'm actually going to paint her dress with the same four colors I'm using to paint the skin, just in different proportions. So those are four colors that I highly recommend getting um, because you, they're very versatile and you can turn them into a lot of different things. Um, I really like the Hansa Yellow Opaque because yellow is traditionally a very um, transparent color and the, the Hansa Yellow Opaque just packs a little bit more punch to it than some of the other yellows. All right, so I'm gonna start 
dropping this color onto her dress and I want to leave those little bits of blue showing because I think that's going to be really pretty. I'm going to put just a little bit more red in there because on top of the blue it's making my yellow look a little bit more green. Um, oh Sherry, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's starting to turn into Callie. I hope she's excited about it. And I just realized she's holding a duck. I think I called it a baby chick yesterday. So it's a duck, I'm pretty sure. Right, Sherry? Is it a duck? <laughs> All right. Kathy's asking, is the purple normally what I do the shading with or is it just this particular painting? So the purple on the skin, that is my go-to color for skin um, underpainting. I always use permanent dark violet. Sometimes I might do a little bit of quinacridone magenta, which I haven't really talked about, but that's one of my favorites too. Um, but usually I use the um, permanent dark violet. So you see when I have a large area of this color, I'm not doing a bunch of hashes. I'm just doing like brush stroke and that's it. And that's what's going to make the painting look confident in the brush strokes rather than chop, chop, chop. You just wanna throw that color in and leave it alone. And I'm thinking about like the direction of the shirt as I'm adding this color in. All right, Sherry confirmed, yes, it is a duck. <laughs> Uh, Barbara, you're saying you don't own a tablet, but wow, what a great tool. What resolution do you recommend screen size? So um, this is an iPad Pro. Um, I don't think you have to have the Pro. Um, and I'm trying to think, the size of mine is probably like uh, 10 inches by 7 maybe, 8 by 10, something like that. Um, and this works great for me. Um, so I think that's a pretty good size. And then I have an adapter to hold it and I have it just on a regular um, photography tripod. So like one that you would use a regular camera with. You don't have to buy a special tripod for this because tripod attachments are pretty universal. All right. Okay, I don't think I want to put any more of this yellow in right now. I might do more later. Um, but I just wanted to get a, some little bits of it in there to cover up some of that blue. Um, and I think I'll just drop some of the baby duck's color in there too so it doesn't look like she's holding a little blue duck. Um, and the duck is a little bit more yellow and a little bit lighter. So I'm going to put a little more white in there. Um looking at comments. Amy saying, what could be an alternate um, to that underpainting? Could you use quinacridone magenta? So if, if the magenta was all you had, I would add a little drop of phthalo blue to it, which will turn it into that um, permanent dark violet color. And I need a little more yellow to make my little ducks color. My yellow is clogged, and then it's gonna come squirting out at me, so I don't wanna do that there. I usually have a couple bottles going. Okay, so I'm adding a little bit more yellow um, and a little bit more white, and I'm just gonna put some highlights um, for the little duck. Put a little glaze in there too. Okay, so we're just gonna start putting some color on this little ducky. Oops. Got a little bit of the duck poking through between her fingers there. Okay. Just gonna call that. All right, um, and now I think my background, I'm going to do um, blue. 
because I because she's so warm and I put down a very warm underpainting, I think I'm going to make the background poking through be that phthalo blue. Um, and I buy phthalo blue green shade is actually the exact color. Um, and I want this to be a really rich, rich blue poking through. And I'm going to have the background on this side be brighter and darker on this side. So I'm going to start with the really bright um, area right here. So I want to use a fresh white. I don't want to use a white that I've already put my brush into because it's contaminated. So I'm putting some white in a totally different area and then I'm going to drop a little bit of that phthalo blue in there. Um, and that's going to be a super intense color. I need more white in there. That phthalo blue is so strong, but this is gonna look really pretty with all the other colors that we have going on. Um, Kathy's asking what brand of paints. I use Golden Fluid Acrylics. That is my go-to paint. I don't, I, I like very thin paints. I don't like heavy bodied paints. Golden also makes heavier body, but I like the fluid acrylics. Okay, so just starting to get some of this background color, but I wanna leave my underpainting. And I'm going to put a few little bits of this poking through between her curls too, because that's gonna be interesting. Um, okay, I think that's enough down there. Now, as I mentioned over here, I'm gonna have the background be darker right here and get a little bit lighter up there because we've got like some atmosphere poking through, some sun coming in. And I wouldn't wanna just do this blue on this side and have this whole side be a darker blue. I wanna mirror it a little bit, even though I'm gonna make the rest of this darker because I wanna give it something to have it make sense that this is the same background going from this side to this side. So that's why I'm bringing a little bit of that color in over here. Okay. Um, Amy's asking, do I use a glaze or a mixing gel? Yes, so I am not picky about glaze. I'm using Liquitex Matte Medium. Um, I do like a, more of a matte finish. I don't like a really shiny glaze, but that's about my only preference as far as glaze. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit more blue in here, but as you add more of the phthalo blue, it gets maybe a little too intense. So I'm gonna offset that by putting a little bit of burnt umber in there just to knock it down a little bit so it's not such a crazy intense blue as it gets darker. And then I think I'm also gonna add a little bit of my glaze in there too to make it a little bit more transparent. My glaze is getting clogged up too. All right. And then we're gonna try and see how this color looks. Yeah, I think that's gonna look really pretty with her um, red hair. You see I'm just like laying these big strokes down and they just look more interesting that way. And I'm changing the direction of my brush strokes. And I think I want it to get even darker as it gets to the face because I want her face to come out at us. So I want something dark behind it. Um, so I think I need to deepen my color even more. I'm gonna add a little more brown. Maybe I'm just gonna move to a new spot on my palette. Adding a little bit more brown. A little bit more of that phthalo blue. Um, Stacy, what proportion? I have no idea. <laughs> That's one of those things you just kind of have to feel it. That's all I can say about it. Um, you know, you just decide how um, opaque you want your paint to be and how much you want that underpainting to show up. And that's going to be make that's going to be different based on what part of the painting that you're working on. So unfortunately, I can't really give a recipe for that. All right, so I'm getting pretty dark here. This is almost like kind of a green aqua, but you can see where kind of creating that difference is what makes her skin look even brighter when we put something dark behind it. If I had continued this bright blue all the way down to her bright skin, what would happen is that bright skin would lose its impact. So that's how you can make one area look brighter or darker is by putting the opposite next to it. 
Um, so you're kind of like playing with what the eye sees. All right, so I like that we got a little bit of background color in there, feeling good about that. Um, and now I'm just gonna decide what we should do next and then we're gonna see what time it is. Ooh, we are close to six o'clock. So um, I think we're gonna be close to finishing this up. But before I do, I would like to put a little bit of the pattern on her shirt because I think once I get these little bits of red and pink in there, um, that that's gonna look really pretty. So, well, thank you, Amy. I'm glad you appreciate it and I really appreciate everybody watching, um, following my work. Um, if you don't know, I, in addition to doing these live demos, I also have um, painting work, online painting workshops that you can find on my website and currently running a sale. Uh, for the month of July, they're 25% off, so um, you should check those out. And when you purchase those, the Lifetime Workshops, you can do them anytime. So don't feel like you have to do them in July. Um, all right. So now I'm going to put those red flowers in. And these are a pretty bright red. And so I'm going to use a red that I have not used yet. This is Cadmium Red Medium Hue. This is like my fire truck red. Um, and I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin crimson to it to darken it up a little bit to start out with. And I'm going to put my darkest reds in first. So I want to make sure I don't have any um, white on my brush because that will make this look kind of pink. Um, but I'm looking for those very darkest areas and going to build those up first and then put some highlights in. And like I mentioned, I don't know if this was yesterday or today, but you don't want to get too hung up on painting the patterns in perfectly because that will take away from the portrait. The most important thing is her face, and so that's where I'm going to put the most detail um, and really put my focus. And so when, they, when there's a pattern on the clothing, you want to let that be pretty loose and just kind of not take away from the focus of the painting. Okay, so we've got some of these dark reds in. Now I'm going to um, add a little bit more of the cadmium red and a little bit of white now to lighten it up a little bit. And a little bit more cadmium red and just start putting a few highlights in there and that's really gonna pop against all these other colors. More cadmium red. Uh, Amy's asking about using a grid to transfer the image. So that is one way to do it. However, I don't feel like it would be the most, like it's the most effective. I feel like it, um, the accuracy is a little bit off. Also, it just takes more time. So I always either project my image using a digital projector or I will, if it's something smaller, like this size or smaller, I will print it out and I will use um, transfer paper and just trace right over it to transfer my image. Um, lots of people love to draw and they do an amazing sketch and figure out where um, all of the features are and the placement. And I think that's wonderful and more power to them. But to me, it just takes a lot of time. <laughs> and I'm in this to... Uh, run a business and also I'm not trying to prove anything about my ability to draw them. So I just transfer it uh, because I can. <laughs> All right. So this is kind of fun getting some of these little bright red colors in there. Um, all right, stepping back. Oh, we've got some more bright pink, but for that bright pink, I don't wanna have any of that alizarin crimson on my brush because um, that is like a burgundy color. So for my bright pink, I'm actually going to use a little bit of that quinacridone magenta that I talked about, which is this really bright, lovely magenta color um, that you simply cannot mix to get. You have to buy it of course, and it's more one of the more expensive ones, but man, it is amazing. Um, all right, so I'm gonna use some of that and some white and some more of my cadmium red. 
So this is going to give us a super bright pink. My white's a little contaminated. I wish that wasn't the case because that's gonna tone down my red. But we're gonna try this anyways. Okay. Yeah, there's that bright pink. Um, this is really gonna sparkle against some of those other colors in this piece. And I'm being really careful to kind of twist my brush so that I'm not, so that I'm leaving little bits of that underpainting showing. This looks good next to the red. And then I see a little bit of this up on her shoulder. And then I've got some white coming in there too on the shoulder. So I'm gonna get some more white that's not contaminated. And I know I need to wrap this up because it's probably six o'clock, but I hate it. This is like the fun time when it's all coming together and I don't wanna stop. <laughs> so I haven't decided if we're gonna do this as another live demo or if I'm just going to uh, make a time lapse while I finish this one up. Um, if it is gonna be another live demo, I will let you all know. Otherwise you can watch for the time lapse video. Um, and I, I'll put that time lapse um, here on Facebook, but I'll also put that on my YouTube channel. And if you don't already follow me on YouTube, um, please check that out because I have a lot of good um, tutorials on there and free lessons and videos and stuff. So please head over. And I'm just Allie K Studio, I believe, on YouTube. So, all right, I think this is it for today. Um, Thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for all your comments today. I really appreciate it. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would share it. I'm so grateful for you. I'm going to post it to my page, but then um, please, please share it if you know anyone else, any other artists that you think uh, might enjoy it as well. All right. Thanks everybody. Take care. Have a good night.